Content warning, discussion of a fictional sexual assault scene, and discussion of transphobia. A little more than a year ago, I read a book titled Frankis Stein, A Love Story by Jeanette Winterson. I quite liked it, and I read some reviews that were overly critical in directions that I didn't quite agree with. I knew, as soon as I created this YouTube channel, that eventually I would have to revisit the book and discuss it. Originally, my plan was to do a very passionate defense of Frankenstein, a love story. As I reread it, however, things got... complicated. Welcome to Vanessa Jupiter's sitting room. Today, it's Frankenstein, a love story video. In case you have no idea what Frankenstein is, we have some updated versions of Mary Shelley and Victor Frankenstein. And at the center of the story is, of course, as the title suggests, a love story between Rye Shelley, a trans character, and Victor Stein. Victor Stein, in this updated version, is a transhumanist scientist. Rye Shelley is a doctor. The book starts at what is called the Sexpo, which is an exhibition of sex bots created by Ron Lord, the updated modern day fictionalized version of Lord Byron. I want to talk a little bit about what I liked in the book in the first place. The main thing by really far for me is the love scenes between Victor and Rye. So much of it was just so inspiring to me. It captures some of my favorite parts of being in love and dating people. One of the things that love is, is lasting, I say to him. He laughs. So it is. And I will always love you, even when we are no longer together. When people part, they usually hate each other, I say, or one hates the other. That is the conventional way, he says. There are other ways. The point I'm making, Ray, is simple. If we cannot keep this love, there is a place in me that has been changed by this love, and I will honor it. Think of it as a private place of worship, if you like. And sometimes, Boarding a plane, or waking up, or walking down the street, or taking a shower. He pauses at the memory. I will recall that place and never regret the time I spent there. So this is very much a style that appeals to me in terms of love, dialogues. Jeanette Winterson knocks it out of the park for me. I'm going to say as well, I did like the updated versions of the characters. I did like Rai, and I did like Victor Stein on my first read. Another thing that I love about this book is a trope that I wish every single story that deals with sci-fi would use. The eradication of the binary between head and heart. Anything that breaks this barrier between intellectualism and emotionality, A plus for me. And this is a story that does go in that direction at points. Another thing that I love in sci-fi is transhumanist scientists. So in a way, this book is touching in a lot of things that I really ap appreciate. On to the criticisms. So I read a lot of reviews, mostly on Goodreads, but also all across the internet. I am not certain if at the time, if I found a single review written by a trans reader. I read a lot of reviews that said, mm, I kind of feel like this book might be transphobic, but I would love to know what a trans person thinks of the book. And I reread it specifically with the question in mind, is Frankenstein a love story by Jeanette Winterson a transphobic novel? So many reviewers, too many reviewers, refer to Rye as a trans man. I don't like saying that someone read a book wrong, but if you finished reading Frankenstein, a love story, thinking that Rye is a trans man, you read the book wrong, you did not pay enough attention. And here's where we need to talk about language. I would love for Rye to have 
point blank said a word to use towards them. The best one that I think is diplomatic to use is non-binary, so I will stick to that. But the language that Rai themselves uses is always stuff like hybrid, in between, I am still mostly female, but I have male aspect. Gender essentialism is already like ringing hard on your brains. We will get there. Do not worry. Furthermore, if you read just the blurb of the book, you will read they them pronouns used to refer to Rai. They are not used in the book itself because everybody that Rai meets is a transphobe or is only ever directly talking to them, so using you pronouns or is Rai themselves, so using I pronouns. They them pronouns are not actually used in the book, but they are used in the blurb. And if that was not enough, there are multiple points through the book where someone refers to Rai as Ryan. Rai consistently makes a point of saying, my name is not Ryan, it is Rai. Which to me is just like such an obvious tell that Rai is not comfortable with a masculine sounding name, that they specifically want a gender neutral name. This criticism is one that actually upsets me because it renders a non-binary character invisible and puts them right back into the binary. Uh, so criticisms of the book claiming that the book is transphobic that refer to Rai as a man, they are transphobic reviews of themselves. I'm going to engage with other arguments, but this one is a sticking point for me and it does upset me a lot. With all that, I think it's important to talk about the language that I just mentioned and how the language that is used by Rai themselves it's kind of... I am not saying that there are no trans people that use words like hybrid. I am not saying that there are no trans people who claim to have been a certain gender and have changed their genders halfway through their lives. Certainly there are people like that. I am not trying to dispute that. What I am going to say is that the contingent of people who traditionally use the language of I used to be female. They tend, not all of them, a lot of them are cool, a lot of them are great, that transness is inherently biological. We are talking here about gender essentialism and how that also exists within the trans community. And I am starting to allude to the fact that Rai, the character, could be argued to be a trans medicalist, which means someone who believes they must transition medically in order to be a trans person. And this is an extremely harmful narrative for a lot of reasons that I'm not going to get into. Furthermore, this is a criticism that I have. It's the fact that it focuses a lot on the transition aspect of it. And basically my point here, that a book that centers on a non-binary character who chose to medically transition and who centers that heavily on them, that like spends so much time with them inside their head, for this book not to mention even once the fact that some trans people might choose not to medically transition. I think it's an oversight that is absolutely not okay. I think that if it was a story that happened to be about a trans person that never mentioned transitioning at all, then it could have been fine. But now <laughs> it's time to talk about is it okay that all of this is not okay? Who is Rai, after all? And who is Victor Stein? Rai has chosen Victor Stein to be their partner. Victor Stein is the updated version of one of the most iconic, evil, first-person narrators in all of literature. Hmm, what if actually 
what we are meant to take from this, we should take that Rai is themselves an evil first person narrator in literature. What if we are meant to read this as an obviously in the wrong character? This narrative that Rai is actually evil, I think it's too neat. Oh, Rai is actually evil, so you know, them being problematic is actually fine. And so now I want to talk about some stuff that I think that Janet Winterson actually got super right when it comes to Rai. And that is mostly the sex stuff. And this is yet another thing that I see criticized all the time when it comes to this book. It's like the overfixation with sex with a trans person. First of all, a lot of trans people have genital dysphoria. It might be a representation that is not accurate to a lot of trans people, what happens in this book. Rai is literally asked what their genitals are by Ron Lord, and they don't care. This is super rare. Most trans people who, who get asked what genitals they have, like, this is a big no-no. This is like a classic no-no, in fact. This is like encountering a trans person 101. You do not ask what their genitals are. Rai being someone who's okay with this, I actually find kind of interesting. And Rai liking to use their genitals, Rai liking to speak about their genitals, Rai liking to like have their genitals be front and center during sex, this is something that I find cool, this is something that I find demystifying about the trans body. The book very much seems to state that sex with a trans person who is my medically transitioning is can be sexy it can be beautiful it can be good it can it can have a lot of genital play because all of those things are true this i like so we have discussed rai we have discussed how i consider rai to be maybe not a great example of a trans person but at the same time how it could be maybe okay that rai is not a good representation of a trans person rai is just a super complex character i think that none of this makes Rai, a badly characterized character or a transphobically characterized character. I think that it just creates a lot more nuance than people are willing to give the book. We need to talk about Victor Stein. So Victor Stein wants to make people become AI and be able to load people into computers, which is just such a huge fantasy of mine. I don't care for immortality, but the idea? of being able to live the rest of my life as a USB stick instead of like a physical body? Amazing. I am so into it and part of the reason I am into it is precisely because of my transness and this is the part of the book where transhumanism and transgender identity like come crashing together and I love it. One of the things that Victor point blank states is part of what he wants for the future is that if everybody is AI, if everybody is in the computer, then what happens is that there's no such a thing as gender. There's no such a thing as sexuality. And this is awesome. This is, this is part of the USB stick fantasy that I have. Like, if we all were USB sticks, then we would have no gender. It would be amazing. <laughs> like, listen. <laughs> Basically, Victor is arguing that Rai is the beginning of the evolution into AI, that changing their body into a shape that suits them more is basically the same thing that Victor wants to do on a much larger scale. Oh... <laughs> okay so here's the thing there is a monologue in the middle of this book where victor literally calls rai the heartbringer of the future that attracts me how could it not you are both exotic and real the here and now and a heartbringer of the future <sighs> Victor is not seeing Rai for who they are. Rai is going through like a bunch of physical changes in order 
to be more like the image of themselves and Victor is just seen part of a bigger political agenda. This is an issue. He only sees Rai as this version of a step into a future that he wants. Ugh. Victor is actually objectively a transphobic character. This complicates the whole situation even more, doesn't it? Because this is a love story between Rai, the non-binary trans person, and Victor, a transphobe. <laughs> what are we supposed to take from this? And here's the thing. If Victor and Rai's love story wasn't the, like, for me, at least, the emotional center of Frankenstein, a love story, I would be way more lenient with this. We are supposed to be wanting these people to be together, we are supposed to be rooting for these people, we are supposed to be shipping these people, and we are supposed to be like, yes, they're so cute, and like, listen, I already mentioned this, the first time that I read this book, I was all for it, I was shipping them, and I was here for them, but reading it a second time, and sitting here, and I'm kind of like, hmm, not sure about this, not sure about this. I think that these two people maybe are not people that I should be shipping so much because maybe I don't like these people so much and maybe the relationship between them is kind of toxic because Rai is a trans person and Victor is a transphobe and like I'm sitting here like mm, not sure about this. But again, not saying that it's not supposed to be done. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm saying that it renders the book complicated again. I think that it renders the message complicated. Again, I think it becomes impossible to say with a certainty if this is a transphobic narrative or if it's just a story with transphobia in it. It's impossible to say if this is Frankenstein a transphobia story or if it is Frankenstein a transphobic story because those two things would not be the same. It seems like we don't have an answer, right? But then... But then we do. I'm sorry to bring it up. So out of nowhere, I gave the warning in the beginning of the video. I wish that someone had warned me in the beginning of the book. Because then I would have had a little bit of mental preparation for it. Let's talk about the rape scene. It's like you're reading the book. It's being fun. It's being cute. And then bam, rape. I hate it. I despise it. I think that it shouldn't be there. It upsets me that it is. Rai says that it's not the first time, that it won't be the last, that this is part of, like, their experience of, as a trans person, that this is just what they have to endure to be themselves. And there's a message that... I'm going to be generous, and I'm going to say that the message that the book is trying to send here is that... It's always worth it to be yourself, no matter what you need to endure. But I don't think that this is the way. I honestly don't. Especially with a rape scene that is as exploitative and as awful as the one in this book is. It comes absolutely out of nowhere. The final four pages of a chapter that was mostly comedic is just like... And there you go. Like, violent rape scene. I'm not sure if I think there's any situation where I think that a scene like this would have worked. In the context of sending the message that no matter what you're going to endure, it's worth to be yourself, Ugh, I hate it. I deeply hate it. It ends up being like, hey, you can be trans, but your life is going to be miserable. And finally, we have gotten to a criticism that I have read a few times that I actually do agree with, which is the fact that it makes the life as trans people seem like it's just misery. It could realistically deter people from wanting to transition because if this is what they're going to endure, you really need to want it. You really, really need to want to transition in order to do it. 
otherwise you're just going to suffer and it's not going to be worth it and this is not a message that i think we should be sending i think that this is a dangerous bad inaccurate message it infuriates me it really does i posed a question in the beginning of the video is frankenstein a love story a transphobic novel and to me the answer is Yes.